Andrew wants to know, are you pro-genetically modified foods? If so, why or why not? Uh, I'm both pro and against. Against, because once you release something which is live, and it is live, and, can, and, and if it has the ability to reproduce, which most of them don't, but if it does, then it's there forever. It'll modify, you don't have control of it. That's why I'm against it. Why I'm for it is by being able to have genetically modified fruits that are tied to pesticides, you can drop the amount of pesticides that you use by a factor of 10, which is amazingly good. And then you're stuck with the fact that many of the companies that actually do this are really bad neighbours. And so there's a case where they had a crop in a field and then the wind carried it onto a farmer's field. The farmer didn't go and steal. The wind carried across. Everybody admits the wind carried across and they sued the farmer. So it's a complicated thing. It can be used for good. It can be used for evil. It needs to be run by people, by the government, for our interests, not for the interests of whoever's able to pay off the politicians. Rob asks, what foods are good for increasing your sperm count? Eat food, mostly vegetables, not too much, and do exercise. Now, fat actually increases your oestrogen level. If you, as a male, are carrying fat more than you need, that fat is not just passive. It will convert certain chemicals into oestrogen and will increase your oestrogen level. So the men who become fat have breasts not just because there's fat in their body, but because they've actually got higher oestrogen levels. Get skinny, do exercise. That's the best thing. And, and then, once you've got yourself down to a baseline, then see if you need to top up in your testosterone. Don't go for the testosterone tablets because what they do is they knock up your blood testosterone so you're nice and spunky and horny and you get a bit skinnier and they kill the production of testosterone by your testicles, which might forget how to do it forever. Dom says, it's claimed that 25 to 30% of Australians are vitamin D deficient, uh, particularly in winter. Should all Australians know their vitamin D level? Uh, what level should they aim for and why? And does vitamin D level have particular relevance for old men? Um, we walked across Spain. I was out in the sun all day. My vitamin D level when I came back was down. I am now on vitamin D tab tablets. Lesson number one. Lesson number two. My wife's a GP. And in winter, she was a city GP. In winter, many people start work in the dark and go home in the dark. And she was coming across a whole bunch of women who were depressed. It's funny, actually, because um, one of the women was a very high-ranking boss of a very big company, and each time she'd come in, she'd burst into tears and say, look, I'm, I'm terribly sorry, um, I'm bursting into tears. And my wife says, no, don't worry. Uh, that happens to about one quarter of all the women who, come in, who walk in my door. And the woman said, what? He said, you know, the number of people who, when they walk in the door and then burst into tears, and that's how we start off the business engagement has zero over the last 30 years. And to my wife, it happens to one third of all of the, and the guys do it too, they burst into tears. Hi, good morning, Dr Tony. Hi, <laughs> come the tears. Okay, so these women were suffering depression. My wife goes to these top up courses, was reading about depression related to vitamin D. The women didn't see the sun in winter. Measured their vitamin D levels, they were low. Gave them vitamin D, bingo, they came good. So vitamin D being low can give you depression. So it's worthwhile getting tested. And the trouble is that then you're up against the old thing of, well, if I go out in the sun, I get the vitamin D, but if I don't go out in the sun, I won't get the vitamin D, and if I go out in the sun, I'll get skin cancer. And, and it's tricky because when my wife was going to the lectures by the endocrinologists, the hormone specialists, they were saying, you've got to get all the vitamin D, all the sunlight you can, or else you will get depressed and everything else bad. And then she go to the lectures by the orthopaedic surgeons and their lectures were entitled Slip, Slop, Crack. Slip on the T-shirt, slop on the sunblock and crack your bones due to osteoporosis because you didn't go out in the sun enough. Who cares about the skin cancer? We're worried about your bones. And the bottom line comes back to this. If you're still alive 
after 25, consider yourself lucky and whistle a happy song every morning you wake up and you're alive, right? In the old days, look, in the 1800s, in 1800, the life expectancy was 40. If you're still alive and you're over 40, consider yourself lucky. And then it's sort of juggling the sunlight and the... It's hard, it's hard. Talk it over with your doctor. So one of the questions I think I answered, what was the first question? Uh, it, it's... Uh particularly in winter, vitamin yes. D deficient, uh, should they know, should we know our vitamin yes, D levels? Yes, you level? should know your vitamin D levels. Next question. Uh, what level should we aim for? Whatever the doctor says. Next one. And is it particularly relevant to old men? Yes, because you can get depressed. And depression is not just feeling bored, sad because your dog died. It's something deep and fundamental. And vitamin D can be tied to it. But remember, if you're still alive and you're 25 and up, consider yourself lucky. <laughs> 